I could forget But these stains won't let me yet How I love not to recall The times I've slipped But then I end up falling Back into what might have been if it had not been for sin my memory sees just what I was but love is blind and because of his blood grace doesn't remember what Jesus forgave and each time I'm reminded of my past mistakes I remember what's been forgotten sins are erased and grace doesn't remember what Jesus forgave He looked beyond what I had been to what I'd be because of him with his arms held open wide he thought of me and chose to die Amazing grace, how can it be that God himself would ransom me through the sacrifice he made? The dead sin wrote was finally Good morning. Welcome to South Asheboro Church of God morning worship service. So good to see you in God's house. Glad everybody made it here safely. Uh, thank God for his goodness, his mercy, and his love. Glad you're here either in the sanctuary or watching online. Just let God have his way today. As we open in prayer, let's continue to uh, pray for, uh, well, before we start the prayer, I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead of myself. We've got some new uh, witnessing tools. These are some new cars that's in the vestibule. Pick up some of them. And take them out, and then if you see somebody, go up and say, do you go to church anywhere? They say, well, yes. Well, say, well, if you're not having service sometime, come visit us. Or if they say no, say, well, we'd love for you to come visit with us. So get, pick up some of these and uh, use them as a witnessing tool. Uh, also, is there any birthdays or anniversaries since last Sunday? I didn't see on my list, but uh, any anniversaries, any birthdays since last Sunday? Okay. All right, uh, we'll have our $2 drawing.
Praise God. Now, as we open in prayer, let's continue praying for Brother Branson, also for Sister Andrea, and Lord Oliver that's on his way. Uh, continue praying for Sister Valerie's complete healing. Uh, pray for Brother Marvin Cox. He's back in the hospital with pneumonia again. Also, pray, pray for Sister Frieda. She's having a problem with her legs. She had to go to the emergency room the other night. So pray for them. They're having some sickness in their bodies. Also, pray for Vince Cranford. Uh, his wife passed away, Carol, and it's going to be a funeral at uh, Bethel Church of God today at uh, 2 o'clock. So pray for that family. Also, uh, continue praying for Brother Eddie. I haven't heard anything. Uh, trusting God's touching him and helping him healing his body. Uh, pray for Sister Angela's back, that God will touch it. She said she's having a problem with it, but God's able to reach down and touch her back. Also, uh, pray for Ryan, Brother Baker's son. He's going to have to have another surgery. Also, Brother uh, Baker has an uh, unspoken request that the Lord knows all about. Does anybody else have a prayer request? Yes, let's remember Sister Audrey. I also would pray for Charles Chisholm, that God will just touch him in his body and help him. Uh, it says he has the same thing that Brother Oxendine had, and, you know, unless God intervenes, you know. But we, God is able. God is able. Okay, if we will, we'll stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we come before you one more time, Lord God, bringing our request to you, Lord God. We know, God, you're able to meet each and every need, Lord God. We've seen in the past, Lord God, how you've answered prayer, how you've met needs, Lord God. Lord, I ask God, just reach down today, Lord God. Touch Charles Tis, the Lord, his body, Lord God. Touch Sister Alder, Lord God. Touch Brother Baker, Lord God. Touch his unspoken request, Lord God, that you know all about, Lord God. Lord, also God, touch his son, Brian, Lord God. Ask God to take him in there, Lord God. Touch his Angela, Lord, touch her back, Lord God. Lord, I lift her up, Lord, we ask God to heal her back, Lord God. Touch Sister Valerie, Lord God. Lord God, touch Brother Sister Paul today, Lord God. Lord God, Brother Ryan, come on, Lord God. Ask God to keep you safe, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you for praise, Lord God. Lord God, touch Brother Eddie, Lord God. Lift him up before you, Lord God. Praise ye the Lord. Psalms 150, uh, verses 1 and 2 said, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the ferment of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. And then down in verse 6 says, Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. You know, the Psalms, he begins the last five chapters of the Psalms with praise ye the Lord. So that's what we want to do today. We want to praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's continue to praise him as we get Sister Amy come and lead us in the congregational.
Holy Ghost and told me to run on. He filled me with the Holy Ghost and told me to run on. He filled me with the Holy Ghost and told me to run on. He's my friend. He filled me with the Holy Ghost and told me to run on. He filled me with the Holy Ghost and told me to run on. name's on that roll, you got a lot to praise him for. Praise God. Hallelujah. This time, let's continue to worship and giving as we get our ushers to come and receive our tithe and offering. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Brother Matthew, would you pray over this time of worship? While I was singing, somebody touched me. While I was singing, somebody touched me. While I was singing, somebody touched me. I know it was the hand of the Lord. Well, glory, glory, glory. Somebody touched me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touched me. God richly bless you for your faithfulness and giving. This time we'll have Kenny and Chris come and minister in song. Right. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bless them, Lord. Other Otherwise known as James and John. Sons of Thunder. Thank you. 
bring those children up in the way they should go, and when they get old, they will not depart from it. You know, I'm glad to see them in here, you know, singing for the Lord this morning. Praise God. This time I'm going to turn the service to our pastor, Brother Sheldon. Give these boys, these young boys, a hand this morning of appreciation. Isn't it exciting to see young people that have a desire, want to do something for the Lord? Amen. Proud of these boys. I was thinking about them when they walked up here. If time stands, I don't believe the Lord's going to tarry that long. But if he did, can you imagine down the road these boys grow up? I thought, man, they might be up here preaching one of these days. Now, we're not calling them. God has to call people. There are people that's been called by mom and daddy that God didn't call. But God is looking for people to carry the gospel. And if we die and go on, this generation dies, and the next generation comes up, God's going to raise up more preachers. And uh, there's no telling what God's going to do with these young people. Can you say amen? I'm so glad that the service on Wednesday night, Brother Albright, done a great job. Thank you, Brother Albright, for helping. Give my hand of appreciation. <clears throat> Praise God. Hallelujah. Who moved that? And uh, so glad to hear the news, Brother Jalen down there and the altar seeking God and God touching him and others. And uh, when you get the Lord in your heart, God will put a hunger in your heart for him. And uh, I'm always excited when I see somebody get Give their heart to the Lord, and God begins to work in that life, and you begin to see that change. I told Sister Shelton, I said, Jalen is, not only is he a miracle, he absolutely is a miracle, but I said, he's, he's like old Jalen. And I, when I say old Jalen, I mean that in a good way. I say, he's just sweet, he wants to give you a hug, and uh, you can see the change in him. And I, I just want to give God all the praise and the glory for it. Amen. I love what the Lord's doing and he can do in a life. He can take somebody's life and do things that only God has the power to do. Amen. He can make a change in somebody's life. Very quickly, and we'll announce this again at the end, uh, we're going to have a pastor's council meeting uh, this coming Sunday on the 6th at 5 o'clock. So pastor's council, finance committee, we're going to meet for about 15 or 20 or 30 minutes. Um, the youth lunch is going to be moved again. I told Sister Sharon before service, Sister Shelton and I both talked to her and counseled with her and told her, please stop praying for snow. Every time she prays, the Lord answers. So please stop. And uh, she said she's not done yet. She wants to see about two foot and then she'll be good. So we're going to pray that she'll move away for a little while, have that snow there, and then come back. Nevertheless, this has been three weekends in a row that we've had snow like this. But I'm glad for two of those we're able to open the doors of the house of God. And be in the house of God. And those watching online know some couldn't get out this morning. Uh, but that lunch has been rescheduled to February the 12th. And uh, this time, Brother Ben said, if this don't work, we get into July, just going to take them to the beach. <laughs> this has been the third time with this, too. So we're praying this works out. Get Sister Sharon praying it works out, brother, and it'll work out. That'll be at 12 o'clock, lunchtime for all the young people. We're going to do a sign-up sheet again. And then I want to say thank you. I know they're not here. They're, they may watch, but I don't know, but. My mother-in-law and father-in-law <clears throat> sent a donation to the church for $100 uh, in honor, I almost said in memory, in honor of Lily Jean and Oliver James. And uh, so we appreciate that. And Oliver's not here yet, but let's pray. Uh, Andrea is scheduled to be induced this Friday, unless something happens before then. We want to pray she makes it until at least Wednesday, uh, because then Branson could be in there with her. And uh, so keep praying for them. There's, he's still sick, and she's, you know, um, a little congested too, so they just want to get better. Uh, continue to pray for um, Eddie and Donna. It left me for a moment. He's recovering from COVID. We still have others that are dealing with sickness right now. I talked to a, a dear pastor friend of mine down east this morning, and he told me, he said, Brother, please pray for us. We've had so many deaths, and uh, people are feeling the impact of this. And uh, we want to pray that God will help touch churches. We need revival, don't we? We need just an outpouring of God. We need something that men can't do. That it has to be sovereign. It has to be a divine move of God. We can position ourselves where God can do that. 
But only God can do that and send revival and change lives. So let's, let's pray and seek God that God's going to move in this way. Amen. Luke chapter 9 this morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you for those able to watch online today. We love you. I know there's still some bad spots out there. And uh, tonight's service will be at 5 o'clock again. And uh, just because of the cold and because there are still some bad places on the road, we want to give everybody an opportunity to afford them the chance to be here. And uh, so let's remember that at 5 this evening. Luke chapter 9, verse 37, begin reading there. I'm glad to be able to come to church. So glad to be able to come to church. Let's pray. Father, thank you this morning. And Lord, as always, we stand here in need of your touch today. Need your help today, Jesus. Need the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Pray that you will speak through us, God, and to us today. Through the word of God, Lord, touch this messenger this morning. We pray, God, for that divine touch, Lord, that makes pre preaching so easy. I pray that hearts are ready to receive the word. Thank you for all the good singing this morning that's blessed our hearts, God, and caused us to rejoice, Lord. I pray now those hearts are receptive and open to the word of God. They'll, it'll draw us to the altar this morning. We pray for young people. We pray for elders and everybody in between, God. We pray for the lost today. Every one of us have family members and loved ones, people we know that desperately need salvation. I thank you, Lord, when we see uh, your mighty hand move in a life like you have in Jalen's, Lord. And thank you, God, that it gives us hope that there are those that are lost that still can be saved by the power of God. I pray you'll fill him with the Holy Ghost. Sanctify souls today, God. Sanctify bodies today, dear Lord. Sanctify spirits today, God. Baptize us all, refill us all with the power of the Holy Ghost. Heal today, Lord. Touch now. Father, everything render, we praise you and we love you and we glorify you for it all. In Jesus' name. Everybody say that name, Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We ought to invoke that name more and more. In this time that we're living in, there's power in the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 9 this morning. We'll begin reading in verse 37. Bible said, and it came to pass that on the next day, when they were come down from the hill, much people met him. And behold, a man of the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is mine only child. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly crieth out, and it teareth him, that he foameth again and bruising him hardly departeth from him. And I besought thy disciples to cast him out. And the Bible said, and they could not. He brought this young man to the church, and the church was not prepared to help him. I brought him to your disciples to cast this devil out of him, and they could not. Jesus answering said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. In other words, bring him to me. Bring him to me. And as he was yet coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. Verse 41 again, And Jesus answering said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither, bring him to me, bring him to Jesus. And as he was yet coming, the devil threw him down. The devil didn't want this boy to be free. The devil tried to interfere here. He threw him down and tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit. In other words, come out of him. The Bible said, and he healed the child and delivered him again to his father. I guarantee you when he delivered him again to his father, this boy was different than he was before. Can you give God one more hand of love and appreciation this morning?
morning. A little while on this thought, simply bring them to Jesus. Bring them to Jesus. Luke chapter 9, here the story that we read to you this morning. We find a hopeless and a helpless family whose child is demon-possessed and they need help. The Greek word for child here in verse 42 means young man. We think about this child, we think about a, somebody like Kenny and Chris or somebody younger, but this is a, a teenage boy. This was a teenager that was brought to Jesus who the Bible tells us uh, was possessed of the devil. I believe in the devil. I believe in his demons. The reason I believe in the devil, the reason I believe that there are demonic spirits is because the Bible tells us they are for real. We are in a spiritual warfare against them. Peter called the devil our adversary in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Then Jesus said if the devil was not real, if demons were not real, Jesus would have never told the church, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. I believe that they are real. I also believe that just like this teenage boy, people today can become demon-possessed or demonically influenced. You listen to me here this morning. Much of this satanic influence of our day, it comes from the television. It comes from movies. It comes from the ungodly music of this day. You can become desensitized and through the violence and through the sex and through the perversion on that television. You can watch enough of that that it doesn't bother you anymore. Does it cause you to, to, to blush any longer? You can become desensitized to the filth that, that Hollywood is spitting out. Can you say amen? You can also become desensitized uh, through the demonic lyrics and the beats and the rhythm of music uh, until demons can influence you, uh, they can control you, uh, and they can even possess you. You listen to me today. I believe that these things that we're allowing our children to indulge in uh, has opened a whole generation to control by Satan uh, and by his demons. We say that we see no harm in it. We say that it has no bearings upon their lives. Uh, but I'm telling you that it will affect your children uh, in a negative way, uh, both physically and spiritually. In this generation, we become like the ancient Romans. Those ancient Romans could watch the little children being ripped apart by lions uh, while they sat eating grapes and drinking wine. We're becoming just as jaded and just as calloused uh, as those pagan Romans of long ago. One writer said this. He said, is there any greater tying thief in the world uh, than television? Its dramatic offerings are increasingly unsavory. Its news coverage is blatantly biased. TV's influence is progressive. Its news, uh, rather the more you watch, he said, uh, the more you want to watch. The more you watch, the more you tolerate. The more you tolerate, the more you imitate. Ultimately, TV takes much more than our time. I can tell you here this morning, that it is largely through the movies, uh, through the television, uh, certainly through music, uh, that people have been influenced by the devil, uh, that people have been controlled by the devil, uh, that people have been possessed by the devil. Uh, all ages are affected uh, by ungodliness. Uh, but I believe it is a truth uh, that young people are particularly affected. Can you say amen? Listen to me this morning, moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas. If you care about your children, 
If you care about those grandchildren, uh, then you better be careful what you allow them to watch uh, on that television. Uh, you better be guarding what you let them look at. Uh, the social media that they're involved in uh, on that iPhone, uh, you better be guarded in what you let them participate in, uh, what you let fill their minds on that computer. Uh, and you better be careful uh, the kind of music that you allow them to listen to. Uh, why is that, Brother Shelton? Uh, I tell you, friend, what they put in uh, is going to come out. Uh, I said what they put in uh, is going to come out. Uh, and Satan will get a stronghold uh, in their lives uh, that you and I cannot get them free from. If Satan is behind it, uh, it's going to influence your child. Uh, it's going to get a hold of your child uh, and control them. Uh, you say, well, Brother Shelton, I, I don't see anything wrong with it. Uh, I'm telling you the Bible itself says uh, that we're to set no wicked thing uh, before our eyes. Uh, we're to be guarded uh, what we allow to enter into our ears uh, because what we enter, allow to enter into our minds uh, will get down in our hearts uh, and it will con take control of that life. Somebody say amen. I know young people don't like when I start preaching like this because mom and dad's going to kind of shake themselves and make sure they're aware of what's going on in that young person's life. I'm telling you, back in the 50s, uh, you didn't have to worry about pornography being on television. You know, you didn't have ugly, filthy shows back then. I, I love Lucy. I, you had the Andy Griffith show, things of that nature. I, but today, even the commercials are perverted. I said there's perversion even in the commercials. This is not on, you know, the HBOs and the Cinemax. This is on the family channels. Even on Fox News, in the commercial breaks, there's ungodliness and wickedness. Listen to me. If you let your children, and if you partake of it yourself, if you let them over and over be fed into their mind, men and women going to bed together, two men together, two women together. If you continue to let them, their minds be saturated with devilish music, filthy language, don't you tell me it's not going to control them. Don't you tell me it's not going to have an effect in their life. What we put in, if it's good, it's going to come out good. But if we put in bad, it's going to come out bad in our life. I'm just telling you, moms and dad, grandmas and grandpas, we need to shake ourselves and wake up and realize that the devil's trying to take this whole generation of young people today. Well, somebody say amen. Got a lot of preaching to do here this morning. I thought back to my own life when I was young. My mom and daddy, I, I'm thankful. I didn't like it at the time, Josiah. They wouldn't let us watch ungodly mess on the television. They wouldn't let us watch R-rated movies. They wouldn't let us watch PG-13 movies. They wouldn't let us watch movies with bad language in it. I remember in the, maybe the ninth or 10th grade, we got our first VCR. You know, back then they cost $12,000. You had to finance them for 10 years. And when you're a few years later, you could buy them for, you know, you can get them for $49 today and get some change back out of that. Back then, those great big things, you know, they were great big boxes. And nevertheless, we got our first VCR. I remember the movie we got. I can't remember never, the never ending story. I don't know how I remember that, but I do. We went, my mom and daddy did not rent R rated movies and let us watch that. They didn't watch it and they didn't let us watch it. Don't you be a hypocrite and tell your children you can't watch it. Every time they walk in the room, you're watching that filth yourself. Come on, moms and dads. You got to set the right example for them. I said, you got to set the right example for them. I'm thankful today. I didn't like it back then. My mom and daddy wouldn't let us listen to ungodly music. I told you before, one boy at school, a friend of mine, gave us a, a deaf leopard tape. I, I didn't really know what it was at that time. I thought, man, this is hard stuff. My brother and I, I don't know why my daddy always got us a boombox at Christmas. I don't know why he did that. We couldn't listen to anything. 
Back then you only had three stations and you couldn't get them good. Uh, we'd sneak down in the barn. I'd get a rap tape or that Def Leppard tape. I, my brother and I would sit down there in the barn. We'd play that boom box and he'd stand there at the door watching, making sure mom and daddy didn't come outside. And, uh, you know, we'd stand in there and dance to it. Uh, but if they'd have called us, uh, we'd have been in a world of hurt. Uh, I'm telling you, the kids today don't have to hide. Uh, mom and daddy goes buys it for them. Uh, mom and daddy will play in the car for them. Uh, mom and daddy will let them play in their houses. Uh, I'm just telling you, friend, uh, there's a devil out there that's for real. Uh, if you don't believe he's real, uh, you'll be ignorant of his devices. Uh, but you and I have the responsibility uh, not only to set the example uh, before our children, uh, but we ought to raise them and admonish them uh, in the ways of God Almighty. Uh, and if we'll do that, uh, God will use them. Uh, God will put his hand on their life, uh, and God will get the glory out of it all. Somebody give him a hand of praise this morning. I'm thankful for it when I got older. I didn't like it at the time. But I'm thankful for what, the way my mom and daddy raised me. What they wouldn't let me do and what they would let me do. Amen. Watch what your children are involved in. Be careful of what you let your grandchildren get involved in. If the devil's behind it, it's going to influence their life. The Bible does not tell us here of this boy what he was involved in, but the Bible does tell us uh, that he came under the control and the power of the devil. The devil possessed this young man. No doubt this father is desperate to see his son set free from the power of Satan. So the Bible said that he brings that demon-possessed teenager to the church for deliverance. But the devil had such a stronghold in this young man's life uh, and the church was not prayed up uh, and the church was not properly fasted up uh, so they could not do anything with the devil uh, in this young boy. You listen to me here this morning. We have people, young and old, who attend our churches uh, from place to place. Uh, they come through the doors. Uh, some of them may have a smile on their face, uh, but, but they're bound by the devil. Uh, they're bound up in sin uh, by the power of Satan, uh, and they need help. Uh, we have people that come in and sit on our church pews uh, that, are, that are influenced uh, and controlled by demonic forces, uh, and they need help. They need deliverance. God help us today. I said God help us that when they come into our churches that we don't have enough power to help them. We don't have enough power in the church that they can find the help that they need. God help us in this church generation when we're not prayed up, when we're not fasted up, when we're not pure and holy the way that they should be and when they come in that they sit in the service us. They watch us sing. They watch us worship. They watch us teach. They watch us preach. But then they go out the doors the same way that they came in. I'm telling you, friend, the church needs to get on fire. I said we need to get on fire. And when they come in, they can be set free by the power of God. Put your hands and praise him today. We've got to become the church again. A church that's on fire with the power of God. A church where there's conviction when people come in. A church when people come in looking for help, they don't have to run out there to the drug dealer to find it. When they come to the church, they don't have to go out there in that world and find it in a whiskey bottle. They don't have to run to a psychiatrist. They don't have to run to a palm reader and a witch. But when they come in the church, they know that they can get help there. They're not going to be entertained. God help us. I'm telling you, when people are under the influence of the devil, when they're bound by sin, it's going to take more than pretty singing. It's going to take more than being friendly 
family to them. It's going to take more than a playground and a pizza party on a Saturday. It's going to take more than dead dry teaching and dead dry sermons. It'll take the power of the Lord. It'll take the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Bible said, Isaiah said, that the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Zechariah said, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. We need that kind of power in the house of God again. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. The anointing, the power of God, the presence of the Lord. And when people come in, they're bound up in things. I'm telling you, friend, if you let your children, you let your children watch all kinds of perversion on that television. You let your children watch all kinds of perversion on them computers. They're going to lose the understanding of what love is. They're not going to know about relationships. A man will never know how to treat a woman, and a woman will never know how to treat a man. Don't you let Hollywood raise your children. Don't even let the church raise your children before you raise them yourself. A lot of parents expect the church to do everything for their children. But if you're not setting that godly example in your home, you need to stop relying on the church to do all of it for you. And you need to start doing it again in your home. Build an altar again. Turn that perversion off. I said turn off that ungodly music. Get Jesus back in your home. My God, get Jesus back in your home again. I'm telling you, it will impact that child they might rebel a little bit. They might not like it right now. But it's going to influence them somewhere down the road. It'll make a difference in their life. God gave those children to you. Don't you turn them over to the devil. Don't you let hell have them. But you raise them by the word and the ways of God Almighty. Hallelujah to God. Church has got to get back in a prayer room again. The church has got to start pushing away the dinner table again. Not just when the preacher calls a week of fasting. Not just when we call a Monday night prayer night. But it must be a discipline of the church and get on fire. We've got to be holy again. We're not pure. We're not going to help anybody. We'll entertain tears is all that we'll do. We'll never help those like this young man. That daddy brought him to the church and the church didn't have anything to help him with. John said, if any man loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I'm telling you, the church has got a forehead and heels over love and love with Jesus Christ and we'll stop loving the things of the world. We'll be pure. We'll be holy. If we'll pray and fast, we'll walk in the power of God and when they come in and they will I said and they will the power of God will be there the preaching of the word is there Jesus is being lifted up he'll draw them unto himself and they'll be delivered from the bondage of Satan and of sin hallelujah to God the Bible said in verse 38 through 41 and behold, a man of the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is mine only child. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly crieth out, and it teareth him that, that he foameth again, and bruising him hardly, departing from him. And I besought thy disciples, I brought him to the church to cast him out, and but they could not. And Jesus answering said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. Jesus said, Bring him to me. The Bible went on to say that he obeyed the Lord, brought his teenager to Jesus, and then Jesus delivered him from the power of Satan. I can tell you, friend, according to the Word of God, this is what Jesus tells us to do. 
Jesus commands us in Luke 14 and 23 to go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. This is the commission of the church. We're to go out in a world that's bound up in sin, that's enslaved to Satan, and we are to bring them in. We're to find them. We are to compel them. We are to persuade them. All of those under the influence and control of the devil, we are to bring them in, and in doing so, we are bringing them to Jesus Christ. You listen to me. The churches have set back long enough and said our doors are open. Just come on in. No. Jesus said of the church that we are to go out and we are to go to the highways and hedges and we are to compel them. We are to bring them in. And when we bring them to church, the message of salvation, it will be preached. Jesus will be there. God will get a hold of their heart. He'll draw them to an order. He He'll touch their lives. He'll set them free. And the Bible said, whom the Son sets free, they are free indeed. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. We are to compel them to come. We are to bring them into the church. And when they come to church, they can hear the word being preached. It doesn't matter where you go to church at. Somebody said, well, just as long as they go to church. No, that's not true. They need to go to the church where the word's being preached. I said they need to be brought in where the word of God's being taught. They need to be brought into the church where Jesus is not on the outside knocking trying to get in but he's already there. He's in that place where Jesus is being worshipped. Where Jesus is being lifted up. Where Jesus is being praised and he said and I if I be lifted up from the earth I'll draw all men unto me. I tell you child of God the church again has got to receive her marching orders and go back out in that lost and dying world and bring them in. I said bring them in. We're bringing them to Jesus. And if we can get them to Jesus, Jesus will save their souls. Hallelujah to God. Ain't it so, Brother Jamie? If we can get them in the church, Jesus will save them. If we can bring them to him, he will change their lives. This man brought his son to Christ as Christ commanded him. He obeyed the Lord and the Lord set him free. We too must obey the Lord and bring them to Jesus and watch what the Lord will do. This is the reason we got these. Some of us are shy. It's all right. Nothing wrong with being shy. Some of us are not good at talking to people. That's all right. Nothing wrong with that. I'm telling you, friend, you get full of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will tell you what to say and when to say it. He'll lead you where to go, when to, when to do it, and he'll be there. And You can take these. Matter of fact, Brother Charlie, if you go get them off the table, bring them. We're going to anoint them before we leave the service today. If you don't know what to say to somebody, <laughs> just walk up to them. You ain't got to say nothing. Just say, hmm, hmm. Mm. Anybody can say, mm. Here you go. Come to church. If everybody take these things and you'll find somebody to give them to, if we'll sow the seed, something will come up. If we just sit back on our ivory towers and say, well, the doors are open. We, we're having church three times a week. Uh, that's not what Jesus said. We are commanded. You listen to me. The Christians are commanded to go to church, not the sinners. I don't read anywhere in that Bible where sinners are commanded to go to church. The children of God are commanded to go to church. But the church is also commanded to go out to where the sinner is and to compel them to bring them into the house of God, to bring them where Jesus is, and there they can find help for their soul. 
The Bible said that Satan did not want to let him go. He didn't want to let this young man go free. He had a stranglehold on this young man's life. Satan wanted to completely destroy him and devour him and send his eternal soul to hell. Listen to me, moms and dad. Uh, the devil don't just want to have a little season with your children. Uh, he don't want to just cause them to get in a little trouble uh, and just rebel for a little while and they'll grow out of that. Uh, Satan's got a plan to wrap their lives up. Uh, amen. To put a stranglehold upon them uh, and to destroy them uh, and drag their soul to hell. Uh, let me tell you something here today. Uh, I've already said it and I believe I'll say it again. Uh, God did not give them to you uh, to turn them over to Satan uh, to turn them over to the darkness uh, to give them to this world uh, he placed them in your life uh, to raise them uh, to know about Jesus Christ hallelujah to God well I'm preaching a little better and you're helping me right now God gave them to you put them in your care for you to raise them somebody said well you know, I don't want them to be out of place. If they live for Jesus, they're going to be out of place. Just like you're going to be out of place. You're out of place in that world because you don't fit in this world. They're going to be out of place in that schoolhouse. Well, you know, they're getting bigger now and I can't control them. They live under your roof. You can control them. Do you feel that kickback on me, Sister Shelton? They live under your roof. My daddy told me growing up, he said, as long as you live under my roof, you're going to obey what I'm telling you to do. I heard him say that more than one time. He had to tell me that more than one time. As long as you live under my house, in my house, under my roof, you're going to do what I tell you to do. I can't do anything with them. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can. Satan didn't want to let this young man go. His intent was to drag his soul to hell forever. Verse 42 said, and as he was yet coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. Charles Spurgeon said this, when this child came to Christ to be saved, the devil threw him down and tear him. Now this is an illustration of what Satan does with sinners. When they come to Jesus to seek light and life uh, through him, uh, he throws them down and tears them. Uh, I'm telling you, the devil's still doing the same thing today. Uh, he throws them down. He tears them down, uh, trying to keep them from getting to Jesus Christ, uh, to cause them and keep them from becoming uh, a true Christian. Uh, Jesus said in John 10 and 10, that the thief cometh but for to steal uh, and to kill and to destroy him. Satan sets up the stronghold in that young person's life through ungodly mess on television, through ungodly music, through ungodly movies. Amen. He gets a stranglehold in that life. He don't want to let go of them. He doesn't want to relinquish his hold of the sinner, the backslider. He wants them to die in their sins. He wants them to spend eternity in hell with him. And I want to tell you something. We can give praise to God and we ought to give praise to God that there is a stronger one than the strong man there is a greater power than the power and the influence of the devil and that is the power of God there's still the power of God to break every chain to break every chain to break every chain and let them go free hallelujah to God oh my God Jesus has the power a stronger than the strong man. Luke 11, 21 through 22. Come on, get ready to play. Don't play yet, please. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divideth his spoils. Jesus has power over the strongholds of Satan. There is no perversion that can, that can get a hold of a person's mind that Jesus cannot give them a new mind. There is no, no sin in this world, no kind of addiction, no kind of power that can get a hold of somebody's life that Jesus cannot set them free from. No matter how hard the devil fights, 
no matter how hard he tries to resist, when Jesus speaks, everything's subject to him. Storms lay down. Satan has to shut his mouth, has to turn loose. No matter how bad he don't want to let go, when Jesus said, come out, he's going to come out. When Jesus says, let him go, Satan's going to let him go. Can you say amen? The Bible said that all the devils and demons have to obey at the command of Jesus Christ. James said in James 2 and 19, the devils also believe and tremble. Mark chapter 5, the demoniac of Gadara, as many as 6,000 demons was in the life of this young man. We don't know what it was. The Bible doesn't tell us, but something in his life opened him up to demon possession. You say, well, it never happened to my child. Maybe his mom and daddy said, said the same thing. And for the next years of his life, this man is tormented by Satan. As many as 6,000 demons had a hold of his life. But the moment Jesus told them to come out, every one of them came out. Every one of them had to obey the command of God. They always have to obey the command of Jesus Christ. Verse 42 in closing said, And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. This young man had been in bondage. Satan having his way in that young man's life, hurting him, bringing pain to his life, controlling him, influencing him. But now he's free because they got him to Jesus. Now he and his family had peace. This is exactly what Jesus can do for all of those that are bound by Satan and sin. Jesus said in Luke 4 and 18 that he came to the earth to preach deliverance to the captives. He said, at liberty, them that are bruised. Jesus Christ died on the cross to deliver you from hell. He was punished on that cross to satisfy the judgment of God against us, to propitiate the wrath of God so that we could be delivered from sin, from Satan, and from judgment. Christ rose from the dead on that third day so that you and I could be set at liberty from the bondage of Satan, the bondage of of sin. Now we can be liberated to a new life by the resurrected Christ. Perversion. <clears throat> Sexual perversion. Doesn't just happen overnight. You don't go to bed one day not a pervert and wake up the next day a pervert. But it is a constant feeding of that mind of perversion. If you feed your mind perversion, you'll end up a pervert. If you feed your mind garbage, you'll end up living in garbage, living a life of garbage. I don't understand. It, it behooves me. I don't understand how Christian parents and Christian grandparents will sit and let their children, who they bring to church, will let them sit and watch ungodly mess on that television. And will let them watch ungodly movies on that television. And will let them listen to ungodly music. And then say, I don't know what's got into them. I'll tell you what's got into them. The filth that you're letting them feed off of. It's hard for me to understand how a Christian parent can say, I really love my child. And then just hand them over to Satan's influence. I, I appreciate Sister Angela. Sister Angela will hunt you down. Ain't that right? She knows, I know, she knows, and we know. She will hunt you down. Because she loves her kids. And she'll fight for those children. She ain't just going to let the devil take them. You're going you're gonna to get them. You're going to have to go through that mama that's full of the Holy Ghost. And I ain't never seen a devil big enough to face a mama or a daddy full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
It's important. It's important that we raise our children the right way. They may cry and whine and fuss and say, "Mm -hmm." well, you can get that out of their hides. But you put your foot down and you say, this is how we're going to do it in this home. If you love them, you will raise them the right way. You let them feed on a steady diet of filth and ungodliness and then sit there and scratch your head and say, please pray for my son. Please pray for my daughter. They're out there bound up in the... Please pray for them. And you didn't raise them the right way and you knew and you was in church and you, you live for God. I believe we'll stand and give an account for that. I believe we'll give an account for how we raise our children, what we let them do. Well, they're just kids. Yeah, they are kids. That's the point. They don't know what's good for them. They don't know what's right for them. They don't know what's best for them. That's why God put them in your care for you to instruct them because you do know by the word of God. Can you stand please? Give my hand a praise. You have done your part when you bring them to church. You have done your part when you've gone out and compelled them and invited them to come. When you brought somebody to church, when you invited somebody and they watched online, when the gospel's been preached and we've preached Jesus today, the Spirit of God is there, the Spirit of the Lord is here. Don't let the devil hold you back. He's going to tear at you. He's going to try to throw you down. Do everything he can to keep you from coming to Jesus. But if you'll come all the way to Jesus, just like this daddy brought that teenager all the way to Jesus, Jesus will set them free. Jesus will set them free. Save their souls. We are to look up and not down. If we look up to the Son of God by faith, Jesus will set us free. He'll rescue us. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here this morning and you're lost, you need to be saved. These altars are open for you to come. If you're watching online, you're a sinner. You can pray right there where you are. We've done our part this morning at the South Asheboro Church of God. We will continue to do our part. We'll get a burden in this church for sinners. We'll do our part. The gospel's been preached. Jesus has been preached. Jesus has been exalted here this morning. Is that the power of God in this place to save you this here? If you're lost, young person, old person, there's enough power of God through the word, the preaching of the word, to save you in your home if you're a sinner. You'll pray and ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. You will believe on Jesus Christ. That word believe. Some folks have used that. They can just believe he died, rose again. He's the Lord of glory. If you just believe that, if you look that word up, what it means in the Greek, when it's used in the word of God, it means to trust that he is Christ. He did die. He did rose again. But it also means that you will obey Him. That's the problem people have. We have to obey Him. That's what real believing is. I believe He will forgive me my sins and I will obey Him. I will serve Him. He will be Savior and Lord of my life. If you're a backslider here this morning watching online, you can come back to the Lord if He's dealing with your heart. If you're a Christian, you're watching things on television you shouldn't be watching. Brother Albright shared with me this morning about a song the man sang about it. What if Jesus were coming to your house today? If he come into your house, what would you have to change? What would you have to do different? Would you still watch the same thing on that television if Jesus was sitting beside you? Oh, come on, saints of God. Would you get your Bibles out and put your magazines away? Would you change your wardrobe? 
Would you dress differently when you went out those doors? How would you treat your spouse if Jesus was in your house watching you? If you're watching things on TV that you need to be, you need to sanctify yourself from. If you're listening to music that's not pleasing to the Lord, if you're on that iPhone watching things, if you're hanging around people that's a bad influence on you, you know, people say, they, what happened to them? Well, they got around the wrong crowd. But you let that same wrong crowd show up on the television. And you think it ain't going to influence their life? You think those people out there in that world that are bad influence on them that would influence them, but you think ungodly music's not going to influence them the same way? You have deceived yourself, Mom and Daddy. It's better to raise them right. You need to be sanctified this morning. These altars are open for you to come. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. These altars are open. If you need healing today, if you need help, if you need God to touch you, if you need to be refilled again real good, these altars are open for you to come. Those watching online, you can build an altar right there where you are. Jesus can touch you. Jesus can help you. I want the pastor's counsel, please. After you prayed, I want you to help pray with everybody else if you would. Help me pray with these folks this morning. Let's ask God to touch our young people. We, we've got a, oh great God, we've got a young a generation of young people that's in real trouble. They're in real trouble. They're bound up by some terrible things. I'm going to tell you something. Hollywood ain't going to help make them holy. Hollywood's going to pervert them. Hollywood's going to teach them it's all right to be married five times. Hollywood's going to teach them it's all right to do drugs. It's all right to drink and party. Hollywood's going to teach them it's all right to have illicit sex and commit adultery. Hollywood's going to teach them that it's okay. If, you wanna lo- if, you wanna, if you're a man, you want to be with another man as long as you love them, it's all right. If you're a girl, you want to be with another girl as long as you love them, it's all right. Hollywood's going to teach you that you don't have to, you know, go out in this world and look like Jesus made you. You know, you can change how you look and more and look different out there in that world. Hollywood ain't going to teach your children to put more clothes on and modesty. Hollywood's going to have your children taking all their clothes off before it's over because they're doing it now. Don't you think those rock and roll stars and those country music singers and those rappers and all that ungodly music today. Don't you think they're going to point your child or grandchild to Jesus Christ? Don't you think they're going to try to influence them in a a manner that draws them close to Jesus? Everything the devil's behind is always to, to draw away from Christ. Let's pray, saints.